When God created the world, he filled it with rocks, acacia trees, and people. He gave the Bedouin a camel to transport him back and forth, and told him that water would be a precious gift. He did not make men to go into the sea, but to behold and admire its greatness. My name is Ahmed the Bedouin, and I live in the shores of the El Bahrel Ahmar, the Red Sea. Only seldom do I cross the desert. The Bedouins have become taxi drivers, and our camels have now four wheels and a safe engine. We carry the tourists near to the water. Many are divers. They get in loaded with compressed air tanks and weight belts. I ask them if this doesn't make them sink. They say it doesn't. That in the water, everything becomes light, and they are like fish. In one respect, these diving foreigners are like the Bedouins. They return full of stories and images of fish and other colorful animals. They ask me if I want to dive with them. But I am Ahmed the Bedouin, and the land is my world. They told me that there are little fish that live amid animals looking like plants, the anemone, and that these animals do not eat them because thus they attract other small fish. They call them clownfish, and I find this nice because I do not know where one animal begins and the other ends. Some say that the best part of the sea is not the fish, but the corals and sponges. I myself have only seen the ones the fishermen bring, clinging to their nets. But these are darkish and dull. But down below, I'm told there are coral forests. Some are hard, with fantastic sizes and shapes and others are soft, dancing to the mood of the currents. The closer one sees them, the prettier they become. They divide themselves into embroidered branches of red and orange lines. Among them live, under disguise, the senia, always beckoning food to themselves.
sea is a well of mysteries. The animals can be small, like grains of sand, or big, like a roadside rock. The Napoleon is a big fish. He has a mouth like a camel and the appetite of a mountain goat. He stops and gazes at people as if he wants to eat them. But my clients tell me that from the humans, all he wants is hard-boiled eggs.
El Bachrel Ahmar is quiet on the surface. But as we go deeper, the strange creatures appear. The frogfish has a perfect camouflage. But if he leaves the rock where he sits, he becomes vulnerable. The tiny pipefish is similar to the desert snakes. The ghost pipefish, also belonging to the seahorse family, always lives upside down. The blur fish, when frightened, puffs itself up to drive the danger away. The multicolored long nosed hawkfish hides among the sea fans. Strange forms abound, giving reason to those people that prefer the land. Some call it the lionfish, others the turkey fish, because of its fins open like feathers. The scientists call them terois. The terois milis is both beautiful and mysterious. But its beauty is deceiving because its spines are dangerous to man and to other fish. Nobody hunts the lionfish. He is the hunter. Swimming and playing in the waters of the Red Sea, many people look around, afraid of sharks. But the real dangers are often under their feet, buried in the sand, waiting for the careless swimmer. The scorpion fish and the stone fish have in their backs spines that release a poison so powerful that it can cause a heart attack and consequent death in a very short time. The vivid colors of the fins are almost always a danger warning sign.
one of the most frightful animals is the so-called terrible moray that only wants to defend his territory. Seldom is it a threat to the divers. They told me that they have even made horror films about the barracuda. But their attacks are rare and never on purpose. They are attracted quite often by a metallic glitter, which they mistake for the silver color of a fish. The attacks and bites come quite often from less frightening fish, such as the Titan triggerfish. My friend Graham, an English diver, is still smarting from diving near Rasum Sid without a hood on his head. Camel rider was always a respected person among Bedouins. Today they admire me for driving a taxi. The cities attract more and more of my people. Starlight has been changed for the lamps of the suburbs. Jeans are replacing traditional clothes and the photos of my cab replace the stories and music of our people. Only the tea and the hospitality remain. I wonder what night would be like inside El Bahrel Ahmar.
God said that after the night would come the day, and that things in the daylight would be different. The world is changing. Our animals are losing their places in our hearts, while the desert increasingly withdraws itself. Perhaps the sea would not be so adverse to man as I thought. Perhaps we are even brothers, as both of us are losing our own characteristics, our wild sense of freedom. My name is Ahmed the Bedouin, and the sea is also part of my world. A small fishing village in the north of Sinai, Egypt, lives Abdallah, an autistic Bedouin, who was born deaf and dumb. Abdallah, shut off in his loneliness, has spent most of his days for many years swimming and diving on the beach, stretching in front of the village. Nobody was able to enter his world of silence. Until one day, the answer came from the sea. A female dolphin approached without fear, showing the maternal instinct typical to her species. Thus began a long friendship, consisting of games and play. Abdallah called her Dar, short for Darfil, the Arab word for dolphin. Little by little, the boy started emerging from his isolation and started to communicate to the other members of his village. Da never left him again. In exchange, Abdallah caught little squid or octopus under the rocks as delicacies for her.
the many things Da taught his friend was that under the surface of the sea there is an extraordinary world made up of extraordinary creatures. This is my world, she seemed to say while they dived, and Abdullah followed her happily. On the way to Nuwaiba lies Saladin Island, dominated by an imposing medieval castle. This fortress is from around the 13th century, but we do not know for sure who the real builders were. This world of Da is also inhabited by man. Divers from all around the world flock to the Red Sea looking for fresh emotions. The underwater caves of this region have an enigmatic beauty with constant new discoveries. The flora and fauna here have peculiar characteristics. In fact, due to the absence of sunlight, the animals and plants assume a nocturnal behavior. This situation allows the divers to observe attitudes and animals only possible at night. Different types of shrimp live in this almost total darkness. The nudie branches, like shellless snails, consider this environment ideal for feeding. Like them, several species of fish seek shelter and food there. The luminous colors of these animals are only seen because of the artificial lighting. Under normal conditions, the density of the water absorbs the reds and yellows from the white light, removing their original colors and contrasts. The sea fans open like a flower due to the absence of light. They too are night feeders. The feather worm is one of these graceful animals dancing while feeding from the movements of the currents. Like many other situations, the interest of man for the underwater realm and his presence can be a means of preserving the oceans. For that purpose, one needs to develop respect and caution while in contact with the sea bottom. Jackfish have developed a predatory attitude in groups. They feed on smaller fish like the silversides, very common in these waters.
Atlantis, always protected by its chameleon-like abilities, is rarer here than in other parts of the globe. Unlike animals like the hawkfish or the coral grouper, In recent years, tourism has increased a great deal in this region of Egypt. Groups from the international community, both European and American, are mainly composed of divers. As we have said, this activity can be like a double-edged knife. If there is an interest in preserving the habitats, on the other hand, the out-of-hand building of new hotels can lead to high levels of pollution. The effluent of sewers, even of fresh water, can quickly destroy life in the surrounding reefs. The Jackson Reef, bordering the Tehran Islands at the entry to the Aqaba Gulf, is still one of the relatively unspoiled underwater heavens. Many ships have sunk in their treacherous corals, half submerged. What an ambiguity. A heaven for some, a hell for others. This hawksbill turtle behaves strangely. It is still friendly to man. We must remember that they were hunted intensively, and the shell used to make several precious objects like spectacles, combs or pipes. This has almost led to their total disappearance. Raj Muhammad means the head of Muhammad in Arabic. It is one of the best diving spots in the world. Situated at the end of a mountainous rift on a desert plain, the limestone rock enters the sea trough in a quite shallow reef, full of small caves and holes, to disappear into the impossible depths of more than one kilometer. It was in this mysterious scenery that Edgar Pierre Jacobs placed the most famous adventures of his cartoon creation, Blake and Mortimer, The Secret of the Spade. reach a gigantic size are colonies of gregarious animals. They too can shelter other animals 
like the long-nosed hawkfish, who perches in the branches looking for food and shelter. Even the lionfish, like this Pteroish milis, seek shelter here when it is not hunting at night time. the green triggerfish seeks food swimming strangely, waving its fins out of sync. The parrotfish feeds on coral. He uses his sharp beak to break and smash them. The different species are easily distinguishable by their colors. the animals, the beauty of the bottoms is due to the diversity of the coral species. Nevertheless, for the careless diver, many species can be harmful. Some corals, like the fire coral, can cause severe burns to the skin and leave marks for a long time due to the action of the nematocysts buried beneath the skin layers. Once again, for everyone's sake, the rule is see but do not touch. In spite of the name of Shark Bank, the sharks are very rarely seen here. As in the whole of the Red Sea, sharks are an almost extinct species. As in all of this region, the vertical reef prevails after the shallow area. still can see the large table corals, named because of the way they enlarge themselves on the top. The Eichhorn coral is one of the most typical here, but even more common in the Caribbean quite far away. One of the most interesting places to visit is the Anemone City so-called because of the enormous number of these animals living here. Their constantly moving tentacles try to capture little fish. Only the clownfish escapes their voracity. This species of anemone can be found in several regions of the world, mainly in the Indian Ocean, around the Maldives or Seychelles Islands. One of the more typical species of the Red Sea is the Arabian angelfish, 
it is distinguishable by its size, the blue color of its body, and the characteristic yellow stripe of this species. The giant grouper, common to these waters, can easily reach over one meter in length. It is nevertheless totally harmless to divers. Travel and hunt in groups is one of the fish's most common means of protection. Their huge number makes the attacks of other predators more random and gives their preys a lesser opportunity of escaping. This is the case with the jackfish, the batfish and the barracuda. Dar the dolphin has created very close ties of friendship and understanding with Abdullah, and so she inexplicably spends most of her days with him. Nevertheless, to her, the sea has not lost its charm. Once in a while, she squeaks her goodbye song and goes to meet her own species. Thus, other landscapes and animals will join the world of Dar the dolphin.